and her festival for Aquarius is a festival for life. So I'm going to read you out two poems. Bodies and Souls is the first one. My soul lives in a quiet place, buried somewhere inside of me. A thing of beauty and of grace. She's why she's a wisp that none can see. Some say that she does not exist, perhaps she's a metaphor. She's amorphous like a mist, hiding behind a secret door. I am the shell in which she hides. I'm the ship in which she sails. I'm the eagle that she rides. She is my hope when all things fail. My world is just an illusion. My soul and my flesh coexist as a temporary fusion. She is the reason that I live. I am the bridge. I am the link. It is my role in life to give. To give her space. To give her space to write. She is the ink. You know. We have been fashioned to create illusions of reality. There's a garden. She's a gate. The garden is eternal. Does every life form have a soul? Is this the match which lights the fire? Does my body play any role in helping me escape the mire which is the life which I now lead? Or is it just a sometime thing, a throwaway of which worms feed, of use until my soul takes wing? It is my task to nurture her, to protect her till she matures till she'll mature. She is the potion which I stir. A sick world, she's part of the cure. My soul is part of the sublime, as is each soul in all life forms. She lives with me for a short time. I shelter her from earthly storms. I feel privileged to perform the role which is my destiny, a temporary uniform from which my soul will then break free. And with my death, all pain will cease. We will embrace our destiny. My soul takes joy in her release. Yes, I've got one more. And this one is called Coming Home. It is a way of life for me. It does let me communicate. Thank God for the computer key. It's a way to manipulate the whims and rage of destiny. I'm a prisoner locked inside a tower which is home to me. Within these walls I sometimes hide. The tower has been built with stone, which were the walls of Jericho, and decorated with the bones of memories from long ago. Joshua will come, trumpet in hand. He'll play and all the walls will fall. Surrounding me, the promised land. I will answer destiny's call. An airplane from far away is landing. There's an aerodrome. My fate is to arrive today. Thank God that I'm coming home. The plane still has some way to go before the passengers, before before passengers disembark. I'll never fly again. I know. The lights are dim and I'm in the dark. There will be folk to welcome me, a lot of people I had known, my daughter whom I long to see. I know I'll never be alone. I will be searched for contraband, but there is nothing they will find. Both of my parents will hold my hand. My doubts and fears are left behind. I'm contented with my lot. My ticket was booked for this flight. Perhaps my life has been a plot written by an obscure playwright in the time which is left to me. My computer will be my friend. My muse will share my company. But all good things come to an end. Thanks, Bob. We have a seriously growing list of poets here, so let's just keep moving things along. Ah. Here it is. It's more a little story, and it is a bit of a love story. We started to walk, the little dog and I. I have a lost dog with me at the moment, so it's been very interesting. 
two days, well, morning and so forth. So this is about a little dog. We started to walk, the little dog and I. Sun was shining, dark clouds out to sea. Down the back lane, over the sports field, up the ramp, and we would have been at the place we intended to be. Admiring the blooming gardens planted on the verge, the little dog happily sniffing around. We dawdle along. It starts to sprinkle. We continue. Wham! Then it came. The winds pushing rain. A garage overhang, thankfully unoccupied. We seek shelter. It will soon pass. I reassure the now quivering little dog. Oh, shit. I left the bird out in the garden. Nothing to it, little dog. We have to go back. I tuck the quivering little dog under my shirt and walk in the now teeming rain. The bird squawking away, loving the rain. The cage didn't blow away. The little dog, dry and happy, cuddled on his sheepskin. Me, laughing, soaking wet. Oh, the joys of babysitting your grandkids' pets. <laughs> Good. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's good to be here, isn't it? Yes. Um, you want a poem from the heart? Well, what happened, uh, the second uh, celebration of the Aquarius, uh, because the property I have, uh, uh, there's a driveway that goes through to another property. And, of course, uh, that was always rented out to the hippies. And, uh, of course, when the second Aquarius happened, there was a lot of hippies that came and sort of went up to uh, this other property and ended up they must have been short of food so they stole all our chooks and uh, of course later on they, they planted crops in my banana patch. So I call this poem something or other. Me neighbours were alternative or, or hippies, they stole nearly all me chooks. Feathers all the way to their house. Feathers everywhere I looked. They grew crops in me banana patch. I thought, what's these strange looking weeds? <laughs> they had this strange smell about them and the tops were full of seeds. Over the fence I tossed those weeds. They got eaten by me cow. I drank the milk and faded home, but I don't remember how. <laughs> I was feeling really hungry. I even chewed on some grass. I never felt like this before. It sat me on the backside. Instead of pe picking bananas, I peeled off all their skin. I ate and ate until I almost burst. Me hunger had a win. Me poor, poor trees, I stripped them bare, not one I left untouched. I swallowed them, seeds and all, until my gut I clutched. I licked me lips, me kelpie dog, but he was too fast to catch. So I plucked me last laying chook and got some wood and struck a match. I opened up tins of beans and peas, spaghetti bolognese, three loaves of sliced sourdough bread, laced with jam and mayonnaise. Picked silver beet from me garden, potatoes, pumpkin too, cauliflower and broccoli, just to name a few. Didn't have time to cook them then, ate them in the raw. Sliced up a big watermelon and off to town for more. Fortunately, it was Mardi Gras. Cops on the road, they swarm. Breathalyzing and drug testing, me conscience now was warm. Wipe this pla plastic strip down your tongue, sir. Have you been smoking pot? I've eaten out me veggie patch of drugs I was taken not. Arrest him, was the policeman's call. You'll leave your old youth here. Come into the RBT van. A retest won't show you're clear. The walk was quite a pleasant trip and I chuckled in their van. I smiled at all the officers. I even shook their hand. It's obviously using drugs. Are you on them every day? You're happy and your eyes are bland. I smiled. Gee, is that OK? <laughs> well, I lost my licence for a year, but it sure gave me some hope. The cost was high, but I found out there's weeds me cow ate with dope. Now I have this realisation that me, that me life has changed. I wear a sarong rainbow blue and people say I've gone to range. There's flowers on the old farm you, only sandals do I wear. 
I bless the day I drank that milk. I've even grown long hair. Now me banana patch is thriving and I dare not tell a lie. Me cow won first prize at the Nimbin show. And those weeds now are ten foot high. Now I never suffer from joint pains and me mates say it's okay. That's where, that's why I uh, recite poetry in Nimbin or anywhere, even like down here at the old butter factory. Uh, well, do you think that's okay? <laughs> the one and only Paddy O'Brien. Thank you very much, Paddy. Uh, the next three poets, and we'll try to keep moving this along because I get more names and I've got some other people I'd like to come around to again. Dennis, then Ray, then Jennifer. Please welcome another 73 veteran, Dennis Aubrey. Dennis, come on down. Thanks, Just one time. So I'm celebrating the 50th year since uh, I quit my last job in 19, at the end of 1972. <laughs> Hitchhiked up here. There's a rebirth. I've never been the same since. And I realized last night, I live in right near the central station now, but I, I'm always at home when I come here. I was reborn. Sally and Susie were walking along a path. Sally, thought she heard something in the, in the grass. It sounded like someone saying, Psst, hey baby, I was hoping you could help me maybe. Sally looked down and there beside the road, she could see what appeared to be an ordinary toad. The toad said, hey yeah baby, that was me. I was hoping maybe you could set me free. He said, I've got myself in some difficulty here and there's something you could do for me. If you could, I would be much obliged. If you could, it would save my life. Sally said, well, well, Susie, what do you know? It's a talking toad. I've never seen one before. The toad said, pleased to meet you. My name's Ray. I'd like to spend some time with you girls, if that's okay. And I've got a little favor to ask you, if I may. He said, a witch put an evil spell on me today. I've got a gig I've got to get to right away. I'm not really a toad, I'm, a, I'm in a blues band. I play guitar. They're gonna make an album soon, I'm gonna be a star. All I need from you is one little kiss. That's all I need to get myself out of this. And when I get back to being what I am, you can be my girlfriend <laughs> and hang out with the band. <laughs> Sally leaned down and he, he climbed up onto her hand she brought him up close to her face and then she said, she thought about it for a second or two. She said, Susie, I know what I'm gonna do. She put him in a handbag and walked off down the road. She said, Susie, he's worth more as a talking toad. <laughs> Dennis Aubrey, thanks very much. Now, please welcome next another visitor on this uh, anniversarial time. Ray. Please welcome Ray. Uh, the, the sound system is brilliant. I was walking across the bridge and I heard Dave's invitation to put up your hand if you're here at the 73, which I was. Good on you, mate. Um, the introduction's already longer than the poem. Um, I haven't been at a poetry reading since I was at some of Pi, I was in Melbourne in 1977. And when Lawson's poem was read it, um, yeah, it's relevant. I was still a couple of days away when I scrawled this uh, a few days ago. Parallel, parallel paths of laugh and cry, bring them together before I die. Yay. 
That was very quick, Ray. Thanks very much. Please welcome next a poem from Jennifer. Jennifer, come on down. I will wear red for Mary. I will wear red for Mary. I will wear red for Mary on this, her funeral day. This tumble down wet morning, hemorrhaging, manure and mud. Her small farm nestling deep in, nest in nettles and rusting things, scented with cow's breath. The whine of dogs still haunt the hollow barn. Roof tiles missing, sky winking. The frog squat of the ancient church, the place to give her up. Chilled mourners stamp impatient feet on the damp slate floor not quite approving of her life, not nor the manner of her death in this desolate space, sky washed, rain puddled, an unsuitable place to make a living. She said I knew her best even as a child, her flute thin body and clamped down smile. Rough hands swollen with the prick of bees, the making of honey, the birthing of lambs. I cannot wear the darkness, not for Mary. Oh, beautiful. 